Welcome to the Massage Hodge podcast. My name is Nick Paterka, a licensed massage therapist in Portland, Oregon. I am joined today by Zach Mayfield, a fellow licensed massage therapist in the state of Arizona. Welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing? I am okay. I am hanging you got a, in there. You got a great podcast voice. I just want to oh, let you know that off the bat. I really appreciate that. You uh, host your own podcast. Well, I should first say that you you also, in addition to being a, a therapist, you have the a program, coaching program, is that safe to say, uh, called Successful Body Worker? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. A successful body worker is my, my main business, but the, the actual program is MT hybrid athlete program. Oh, okay. That, yeah. That's the program I created under that name. Cause you're also a power lifter. So there's, there's yes. a lot that goes into that program. I think that you've created and that's, yeah. there's some, some things I definitely want to ask you about that later, but to start, I did want to mention, I'm sporting my grand Canyon railroad railway mug. What? Celebrate Arizona today. Awesome. Yeah. Love that place. Um, so your origin story as a therapist, if you wouldn't mind giving us just a little, little comic book, number one. Absolutely. So I got into massage therapy 10 years ago. I, you know, you covered the fact that I'm a power lifter. So that's kind of uh, what happened 10 years ago. I had an injury, you know, most of us sustain a pretty bad you know, a career altering injury that you have to make a choice after that happens. And, um, that's typical in powerlifting. You mean typical in powerlifting. Yeah. We all lift like idiots every once in a while. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, uh, a few years into powerlifting. I had a shoulder injury. It was a, a pec minor slash subscapularis tear, Ouch. Uh, part, part tear. So my buddy and training partner, he was like, Hey man, you should go see a massage therapist. And at the time I was, you know, 19, 20 years old. And I was like, you mean somebody else is going to touch me? And, you know, <laughs> it, it's just kind of that dumb yeah, no, kind I, of, I uh, get it. Yeah. young person mindset, but I did. And he ended up being a male therapist and it was amazing how welcoming I felt and um, how quick the actual treatment worked. Oh, wow. So two sessions, I was able to bench press 135 again. And I was like, okay, <laughs> like <laughs> this is the real deal. Like this helps people, you know, and it's kind of the, the light bulb moment and made me want to be a therapist and give back to, um, at first power lifters. So just athletes in general. And, um, it just, it, it ended up being everybody because everybody's in pain. So, yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of the origin story and the rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually you left, that was in Illinois and then you, you have found yourself to Arizona. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So what does it take to get and maintain a license in the state of Arizona? So uh, comparing it to Chicago or Illinois, Chicago and Illinois, as far as I remember, it's 560 hours, and then Arizona is 720. Okay. So I was kind of freaking out about that because, you know, we were starting to move, and I was like, okay, I don't have 720 hours, like the difference, you know? Right. So I, I just got in contact with the board of Arizona, and she's like, no, 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 you just, you already took your schooling. So your grandfather in to the actual, Arizona required. Oh, interesting. I was like, okay, cool. So yeah, I just I literally just transferred jobs, just uh, reapplied, uh, re redid my practicals and stuff for Arizona. And that was it. It was okay. a really easy process. And I, I was really thankful to. But normally come if you were just starting from scratch in Arizona. Right off the bat. Yeah. You were 720 hours. Yeah. Just like, you know, the rest of Arizona. And yeah. then would, do they take the Mblex there? Do you know? I'm not sure. Do they have their, okay, they might have their own state exam. Yeah, I, I think it is the Mblex. Yeah. Most, yeah, but don't call me on that. I will. Uh, I'll pop it in the show notes. I'll, I'll I'll give it a quick look up, but I, I think that it is. It's it seems to be more than fifty percent of the states are Mblex now. Yeah, I, I know for Illinois it was NCPT and B. Oh, they're still the case. Yeah. Still, still on the lookout for my Illinois episode. 
<laughs> I'll try and help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. So the as we record, it's it's almost May 2020 and very unusual time. Could you update us on the state of your state as it regards to the COVID-19 crisis? What's the official outlook there and what's been going on? The state of my state. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, as far as I know, we have... I think about 8,000 outbreaks, but not as many um, unfortunate passings. So that's really good. I think, you know, as a whole, it's uh, kind of a more mild temperature, except for summer. So people are a lot more active Mm. and um, some are healthier. So I think that that comes into play. Immune systems are stronger. So, um, not as many people are going on respirators and all that stuff, which is really good. And as, as far as I know, May 4th is the, the reopening. So um, you were officially, the, your state officially was closed and then you're, you're, you have a, an authority to reopen starting the 4th. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And whether that means, you know, non-essential businesses keep social distancing, I'm not Sure. I don't, I don't think it's going to be quite as easy for us, unfortunately, like us body workers. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of us aren't deemed essential, which I think should change. Yeah. I think but. some of the conversations <laughs> I've had here, it, it's a little, it, you know, it, it hurts our egos a little bit. It feels like yeah. I'm trying to remind myself that I'm like long-term care. Massage therapy is essential. Yeah, trying to and I try to educate people that it's it should be part of your wellness plan. It's not. It should, we should need to get out of this luxury mindset for body work. Yeah. Uh, but in yeah, the short term, as it regards to flattening the curve, I think, like I, I understand all of that. You know why why we're considered non essential. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that, there, there's always talk, and I have a, a group as well on Facebook, and there's always talk about us being medical professionals and like yeah. being regarded as such, you know, and there's kind of a, a big kind of difference in thinking there, but yeah, I think all in all, I think we should be considered medical professionals. Like, you know, like you said, getting away from that luxury kind of mindset, mm-hmm. you know, that this actually helps people, you know, people get off of medications, you know, is it's your a big sense, deal. Is your, yeah, for sure. Is your sense that, therapists in your community are raring to go with the fourth or are they kind of like, let's wait and see. It's, it's probably across the board. It's, it's probably. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You have people that you have therapists that are like, uh, you know, kind of hesitant to, to really push forward and people who are gung ho, you know, like I want to get back to work. Like I'm, I'm dying here in my house. and Like I just want to touch people again and help them. And yeah. So, I try to have a lot of a lot of empathy for these are just such challenging choices for people's livelihoods and businesses yeah. and I understand the apprehension for sure. Yeah. So it's just like some of the some of the gr- groups online it can get a little heated as it were and it's just like we all yeah. need to like take a step back and just chill out remember what we're doing this for. Yeah. Know, yeah, and just kind of be a little more understanding with each other I think. Yeah. So what do you think this does, this collective experiment, forced experiment in touch deprivation? How does massage therapy come out of it? What do you, do you think people are going to be running into massage therapists now? Are people going to realize or? (laughs) Well, I think item A, first off, we have to show our clients that we are professionals and we do have upholding clean and sanitation standards. Mm -hmm. Like we have to reassure them that we are doing our part. They have to see us cleaning, you know, they have to see us, you know, wearing the masks if they want us to wear them. You know, we have, we have to be the medical professionals that we, we want to be. I think that's, that's motion a, in this whole process and you know just reassuring the clients that we're good to go if they're good to go yeah so uh, yeah i think a lot of people are going to be 
going to be running to us because they've been cooped up in their homes, Mm -hmm. stressed out about this whole outbreak, you know, and they're, they're ready to get back to feeling better. But, uh, yeah. And I think we also have to reassure other therapists as well. Like Mm -hmm. the, the whole apprehension kind of, uh, population of our therapists that are afraid to get back to it. Yeah. You know, we have to reassure them as well. So what, what sort of protocols, if anything, are you, are you changing up in your clinical practice? So uh, I'm already very sanitary oriented. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's going to be preventative screenings. So it doesn't matter, you know, when they've been in the frequency they've been in asking them always, how do they feel mm-hmm. taking their temperature? <clears throat> you know, it kind of seems like, <clears throat> sorry, kind of seems like overkill maybe, but I think we have to have some different measures in place to make sure that this doesn't spread. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> as far as going forward with like, corporate franchised gigs, I think we are going to see a downfall in a lot of like massage and like, I don't want to name names, but you know, these you corporate name names. Jobs. They're not supporting the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I work for some of those franchises. I just, I think their business model is, is susceptible because part of what I, what I've always done was 30 minutes in between, but I think I'm going to extend that even further. Yeah, whatever you got to do. Yeah. First, but like those business models, they're, they're zero minutes in between essentially. Yeah. It's just, it's just like snap, boom, snap, boom, snap. Boom, boom. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know that that was ever good for anybody. It was yeah, never and, that great for therapists or client. And now they're just going to need more time to, to be more thorough. Yeah. And I think there's going to be a lot more use for traveling personal practices people who can travel to homes. Oh, interesting. And, Do you think, and those, I think overall, overall, those, just, like, um, those apps will, will see a, a boom, you know, like, I think so. Yeah. 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 Soothe and, and zeal. I think they're called. Yeah. 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 yeah I th- think just overall businesses that they're going to realize that you can do a lot from home. You can do a lot from your laptop and a lot of these places with large overheads and stuff like that. I think we're going to see, not as much use for them. Yeah. That's just, yeah. That's just what I foresee. But, you know, again, it, it's hard to kind of foretell that, but. Yeah. That's interesting. What about when you start to see people again, do you expect to see anything in bodies as a result of this? Like where, where are people putting all of this stress and anxiety in themselves while they, while they've been stuck at home? I think just the, the normal trouble yeah. spots, neck, back, shoulders, pecs, that kind of thing. A lot of sitting. So hip flexors, glutes, lower back, QL. Just everywhere. <laughs> all those things. Yeah. And like those, uh, those shock roll points that digest anger and digest fear. And, you know, like just getting all of that stuff out is going to be key too for a lot of people. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, Reiki practitioners really flourish from this as well. Why well, would workers and yeah, I mean, there's some Reiki practitioners that would work over, I mean, from anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. Wondering if they've actually seen a, a boom just in the downturn. Cause it's, they're kind of like the only modality that can really work right now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah and I, I want to go back to like what we can do. Like I've seen a lot of uh, talk about therapists going virtual. You yeah. Know, what we're doing, talking via zoom, mm-hmm. you know, like spreading their, their care virtually. So virtual um, self care, manual release, so it would just um, look like this, but I would be talking you through yeah. what you can do on yourself kind of thing. Using lacrosse balls, using yeah. foam rollers, you know, and like self-care exercises with bands, you know, and mm-hmm. stuff like that, I think is going to be really helpful for clients. 
Yeah. It's not always a, a physical touch factor, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's what other therapists are kind of fighting about. Like, oh, we're, we're massage therapists, so we have to touch people. <laughs> I, I don't yeah. think that's, it's a very important piece, but there can be a lot more done with our skills, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I've been trying to wrap my head around that a little bit. I'm not, not quite there yet. I'm, I've been yeah. more inclined to sort of like get myself just out there in social media and like produce helpful yeah. little videos that people can use. But I could see how the direct personal connection would be a little bit more meaningful than just being telling your client to be like, oh, I made a video about how to release your, you know, how to yeah. work on your own neck, like as opposed to walking them through it. Yeah, that'd be that's interesting yeah. to think about. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So given what you do with the successful body worker and your program, coaching and all that, I think you're a great person to ask about longevity for therapists. It's something I, outside of this 50 state thing, I like to ask about longevity and burnout. And I think that's something that's really top of mind for you. If you could talk about what therapists can do from from all the angles, I think it's more than just physical Absolutely. About yeah. having a long and sustainable career. So th- this is exactly what successful body worker is about, is burnout of the massage therapist and completely reversing that burnout rate. So mm-hmm. I don't know if you know the statistic, but it's three to five years that massage therapists right out of school burn out, which is absolutely yeah. terrible. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> so... That's one of the reasons I started all this. So being a power lifter, my, my whole focus, I would say, is kind of more of the physical aspect because that's a big, that's a big percentage of why therapists burn out. You know, it's, it's injuries. It's not being able to take on their workload, taking on too many clients, which, you know, they should back off <laughs> if they're feeling, you know, too much of the workflow. But yeah, so the the program that I created, the MT Hybrid Athlete Program, it is a strength endurance and I strength endurance training program. I won't go too much into detail about that, but it, it is building strength and endurance at the same time, so you can get through a work week without feeling run over by a Mack truck. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's, it's blending, you know, compound exercises, assistant exercises, grip work, conditioning, and postural exercises to help you stay injury-free and not injury-prone anymore. Yeah. There seems to be a lot of focus on training and using proper body mechanics, mm-hmm. but I've sort of felt for a long time that at the end of the day, like, you, you're going to just need strength. Like, yeah, body mechanics absolutely. are essential, but having the, the core strength and the grip strength, like it's only going to make your work better. Right. And the less effort you can put into strokes and into your techniques, the more longevity you're going to provide yourself with. Yeah. That's, that's kind of how I look at it. So uh, with the program, I have an exercise index that you can kind of like go in and plug in your own exercises to what you need. So it's like bringing, bringing the exercises that you need specifically tailored to you and what your weaknesses are. Mm -hmm. So if you're having trouble pushing into the floor, activating your glutes to like push back through the floor to push into your client, we have exercises to help you help yourself with that. So it's all, you know, box squats and, Romanian dumbbell deadlifts, stuff like that will all help with glute and hamstring and quad strength. Yeah. Yeah. Do you work on a lot of other power lifters? Not too much anymore. No, Uh but you have, you have experience with that. I've always been a little intimidated by like clients, like just with a lot of muscle mass. Well, have you, have you worked on a lot of them before? I've probably just a handful over the years. Yeah, I, I found I had a lot of a lot of them in Illinois, but a lot of them were kind of babies when it came to pressure. <laughs> like 
we're always sore <laughs> and yeah. always in pain. So, you know, the more pressure that you use, at least for me, I'm like, you know, like we can back off a little bit. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, well, yeah. 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 It's, it's not as uh, intimidating as one would think. Yeah. I, maybe that it's helps. just like a visual <laughs> intimidation thing. You're just yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Man, this Very aesthetically, you know mounds of muscle to, to, to manipulate and work with. I had a teacher in school that said she would work on bodybuilders and she would always use a lot of percussive work. Huh. I was like, I found that interesting. I've never tried That's that. interesting. Yeah. A lot of Tapotman and like vibration, vibrational stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Neither here nor there. Yeah. And, and as far as like there, as you said, there's different parts of burnout. So it's, it's right. not just the physical, it's, you have to maintain the, the four aspects of self-care is what I say. So physical, mental, emotional, financial prosperity, and spiritual. You have to maintain these four running all at the same time in this cohesive vehicle to keep it all moving at the same time. Mm. That's how you really provide yourself with the best longevity that you can as a therapist. So again, that that's what we offer at successful body workers, is just burning on all cylinders and helping therapists with whatever they need. Well, that's really cool. Yeah. Well, Zach, I really appreciate you being here to talk about Arizona and longevity and all these other topics. I would encourage anyone to go check out your website, which is? It is HTTPS <laughs> forward slash forward slash <laughs> successfulbodyworker.com. And I actually have a 30 day MT challenge. So it's a lockdown edition. So you can do it from your own home. All, all so, um, like no equipment required. Uh, and anything that you have around the house, soup cans, uh, you know, heavy weighted objects you can use, but it's not necessary. Okay. Um, so anything will help, but yeah, you can do all the exercises from your own home. It, well, that's cool. I have uh, exercises for chairs, um, different things. So yeah, if you're a massage therapist and you want to break away from the monotony for a little bit and challenge yourself and strengthen yourself. So when you go back to your clients, you can be, come back stronger and more injury, less injury prone. So Stronger MT and 30 day challenge lockdown edition. So oh, that's cool. Yeah. Just take we'll, that. We'll, into the, we'll pop a link in. You get, we can get a link absolutely. into the show notes. And I would encourage anyone to go check out some past episodes of your successful body worker podcast, mm -hmm. which is widely available. And there's some great yep. information there as well. So we'll chat for a few more minutes off this recording, but thanks again for being on the show. Yeah, no problem. Thank you very much.